Hey, this is Latif Mikado, and you're listening to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, where I take some time each night to try and reflect on the freestyle scene, where it is, where it's going, and try to figure out how to sustain it, not just for future generations to enjoy, but also to benefit. So sit back, relax, and let's talk some freestyle. Hey, what's up? This is Latif Mikado, and welcome to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast. This is episode 73. Um, It's a Friday night. Yes, I brought Angel to the airport this morning. She had a safe flight, thank God. Made it to Florida. They had the wedding, um, what is it, the practice dinner, they call it? Yeah, practice dinner, whatever they call it. Uh, send me a couple pictures. Everybody looks happy. And, uh, you know, I'm glad. I'm glad she made it. Um, glad she was able to spend time with family. Glad that she was able to represent our family. Um, I know this was very important for her. And I'm, I'm glad she was able to, to make it. But, of course, deep down inside, I didn't want her to go. <laughs> so, but uh, it's crazy because you don't realize how much, uh, you know, how much you'll miss someone until they're gone for even a few hours. You know, I'm just, we're, we're together almost 20 years and we spend, that's one thing we will never regret. We'll never have the regret in saying, wow, we didn't spend enough time with each other because that doesn't exist. We spend a lot of time together. We work together, play together, live together. We do everything, everything together, you know? And, um, so, you know, I, I would never have those regret, regrets, but, uh, so tomorrow's the wedding. And just so you guys, if you guys don't know, to one of her nephew's, uh, weddings, uh, he's getting married and, um, and the wedding's tomorrow. So they should have a good time. It should be fun. And, uh, they should be back Sunday and we start this whole game all over again. The whole hustle. Things are a little rough now, man, with this uh, coronavirus, man. It's like everything is shutting down. I'm looking at freestyle concerts getting canceled. I had three shows on the line with dates. No contracts yet. We just solidified them. Everybody was down. We were able to do them. And then they called me and they said, we can't risk it. And I kind of I kind of agree. I kind of agree. Because the last thing I want is to be preparing to go do a show or promoting a show that doesn't happen. So I don't want that to happen. So it's funny how our situation worked out. You know, we, we got pretty busy. We had a few shows like back to back and it was right after holiday, holiday after the holidays. So um, after uh, during the holidays, things get massively slow. So um, so you need time to to kind of uh, get everything back on track, you know, uh, so um, so we had a few shows that were back to back and then we knocked those out and then all of a sudden this happened and now we have a few weeks off. So that's the way I'm looking at it now, a few weeks off, because honestly, we don't know. We don't know how long this craziness is going gonna, is gonna to happen. You know, it's scary, you know, um, you never think you can be affected. I don't know. I'm one of those, what they call them, Afrochondriacs. Afrochondriacs. <laughs> I know I'm saying it wrong. Uh, yeah, as soon as there's a, a disease floating around, I swear I got it. You know, I'm just one of them dudes, man. I can't even get sick. I can't even have a cold. I swear I feel like I'm dying. I honestly start feeling like I'm dying. I start, I told you guys this before, you know. I start calling my kids and telling my grandkids things I want them to know and telling my wife, don't forget where where the, the combination of the safe is. Telling my son, hey, don't forget to do this. Tell my daughter, hey, you know, do me a favor, finish my books. <laughs> Actually, I should be telling my son that because he's he's really the writer. I mean, Erica writes and draws, and but Adam seems to be the one that's, uh, he likes to write. He writes a lot and uh, smart dude, man, very smart dude. So, um, I think he might be the one to to take on. Not only that, his 
His name is Latif Mikado. It's Adam Latif Mikado. So uh, he'll fit right in, <laughs> you know? So, but um, but other than that, you know, everything else is uh, cool. I'm, I'm here with Santana. Angel made us all these uh, different compartments of food. I think we had just the easiest thing seems to be the, the pasta. Like everything else is like all this. Yeah, put the rice and then you have to put the beans and then you got to pull out the steak and you got to unwrap it from the aluminum foil. So I'm like, man, she got this big thing of pasta. Guess what we're going to eat for breakfast, lunch, and dinner? We're going to eat this pasta, you know? So she's probably going to trip out when she comes home and says, yo, man, what the hell did you guys eat? <laughs> you know? So tomorrow I promised uh, Santana we'll go to IHOP. So we'll probably do that in the morning. We'll see. Uh, she wants to go to movies. We'll probably go check out Flick also. You know, kind of get out just for a little bit. I stay in this house, man. Like, I'm, I'm backed up. I really need to finish uh, these books. I'm like on chapter six of book two. I mean, that's okay, but I need to, I need to boogie. I need to have a lot more than that done. So this week I have, I, I gotta, I gotta be on my case, you know? So talking about at least at the minimum, 10 chapters a day. Like I really got to fly through this book, you know, these books. Well, right now I'm working on chapter on uh, book two. So just for you guys, uh, for you guys who don't know, uh, it's, it's called Yes, Yes, Y'all. There's three books, books one, two, and three. The way that came about, um, I sat down to write one book and I couldn't stop writing. And when I finally looked at it, you know, just so you know, most of my book, well, all of my books are between 90 and 100,000 pages. And that's pretty typical for novels. Some novels are like anywhere from like 60 to 90,000, not pages, uh, words. So the average novel is anywhere from 60 to 90,000 words. My books are from 90 to 100,000 words. When I started writing Yes, Yes, Y'all, I couldn't stop writing. This is how good this book was coming out. I just couldn't stop writing. And I ended up with almost 300,000 words. Now, when I thought about it, I said, okay, you know what? This might be kind of cool. You know what I'm saying? I can do it like a, a, the freaking war, war and peace of freestyle. You know, yes, yes, y'all, you know, is uh, has some old school hip hop tones, but also uh, freestyle. I don't want to give it away, but yes, freestyle is in it. Um, but I ended up writing so many pages and I was going to make this really big book. And I said, you know, this might be kind of cool, you know, big ass book looking like a dictionary. Yes, yes, y'all. But then I thought about, I said, well, if I'm going to do a book that big, most likely it's probably going to have to be a hardcover. Not necessarily, but it might make the most sense. But then that goes into a whole other um, world of production, doing hardcovers, because then you got to do the hardcovers, and then you have to do the dust sleeves, and then you have to do the stamp, and it is a whole other process. I've, I've been into that. I've, I've checked it out. Um, I need my books to be, I, want, I need people to be able to carry the books. That, that's important for me. And that's why if you notice, if you go to like uh, Walmart, you notice those uh, five by sevens, those, uh, those little novels, you can just put those in your back pocket. They're called like pocket books, basically. You can just pop them in your back pocket um, and, uh, and keep it moving. You know, my books are a little bigger, the six by nines. Uh, they're not that small, but they're not that big. They're a good size. They fit nicely on the shelf. Uh, they look neat. And uh, they're, they're easy to hold and easy to read. So that's why I chose uh, I chose that format. But Angel gave me the idea and said, hey, you know what? Instead of doing this big-ass book, why don't you make two, three books? You, I mean, you wanted to do a book a year. I basically started these books in 2015. With 2020, I'm a little bit, you know, uh, when, uh, went over the time frame a little bit, uh, but that's cool. So, um, I, I thought that was a great idea. So I said, okay, you know what? We'll do, um, we'll do the three books with, and it was like, okay, they're called Yes, Yes, Y'all, what should I name them? And I went back and forth and I, I kept thinking, you know, you know, Yes, Yes, Y'all, the beginning, Yes, Yes, Y'all, the middle, Yes, Yes, Y'all, the end, da, da, da. I went through so many, all these different subtitles and then, and nothing was grabbing me. Probably because when I wrote the book, that wasn't my idea. It was just yes, yes, y'all. You know? And uh, so I just ended up calling them book one, book two, book three. Very simple, 
straight to the point, easy for people to understand and to know what they get. Not only that, the covers are very different. They're, they're the same, but they're different. So um, if you guys are curious to know what these books look like, uh, you can go on my Facebook page, my personal page, and just go up on the top. On the top uh, cover, you'll see uh, the covers there. They came out dope. They're really, really good. So um, I have to have them done by the 20, well, by the 27th. So they have to be the masters have to be in by the 27th. That takes a few days to print. So pretty much by the end of the month, these books will be available for sale. I think the Kindle gets available right away on the 27th. Um, but that's only my first draft. So I don't... Uh, and I have to release them. I have to put them up or I get penalized by um, uh, Amazon and uh, Barnes & Noble. So I can't... Because I did pre-sales. But I did the prices so high on the Kindle version... That um, and I did it purposely to um, discourage pre-sales. So what I was doing for pre-sales is I was offering the book um, a sale. I was doing three books for the price of two, and I was signing each book. But you have to buy those directly from me. Now, mind you, um, when I utilize my wholesale price of the books, I'm basically I'm not, I'm not making anything zero. In fact, I might even be minus because I have to ship them. But I and I only did 25, so and I still have a few more to go. I think uh, I'll have those done because I don't push it, I just leave it there. And then I have nowhere people will hit me up and say, Hey man, uh, I'd like to put an order in for this. What do I do? You know, so I said, Okay, cool, you know. But basically, what it's going to be is when the books are done, I'm going to have X amount shipped to me and then I'm going to spend a day uh, just sorting them out and getting to the post office and and uh, mailing them out to uh, the people. And, and they were just for. Just for promo, so I had a reason to uh, put the flyers on, let people know this thing is coming, you know. So, promoting books is is not an easy task, you know. It's not easy. Not everybody likes to read, you know. It's like, how do you find these people? Like, who, you know? I, I sit there. I got a thousand books. I love to read. I read all day. Like, books have this. I have this thing with books. It's like, you know, how some people look at a car. Some people get a new motorcycle, and they kind of. It's weird same way with books it's weird right it's kind of nerdy um and um uh, it's not like i'm this genius like i'm this smart dude that you know what i'm saying like this point that i'm not i'm not you know but i i just have this fascination with with books i just think they're dope <laughs> you know i i you know we were talking about the other day uh, me and angel and we were like if you could do one thing Okay, money, let's say all your bills were paid and you, you don't have to pay, you can get your food and everything. But you got to do something. You got to do something. Of course, she said she would perform. And I, I, I knew that. That I was not, not everybody would do that. There's a lot of people that would say, oh, I would, I would just travel the world or I would be a, a tour guide or a, a worldly tour guide or, you know, I would get into sports or I would do this or I would do... And I knew right away she would say she would perform. She would be a performance in her blood. And I'm one billion percent convinced of that. You know, um, I know a lot of artists. I'm around a lot of artists. There's just it's a different level of passion when it comes to the arts with her, with singing in particular. You can tell. She just, she lights up when she performs. She really loves it. There's never a bad time for her to promote. It's never, oh, I'm, I don't feel like doing this. I, feel, I don't feel like doing this show today. Never have I ever heard her say that. You know? Now, me, on the other hand, if everything was paid for, I got my food, everybody was good, and they said, you got to pick something. This is what you're going to do all the time. You know, I would write. I'd be writing books. I would try to, you know, right now I'm trying to do, I, you know, I want to try to do a book a year. But I would love to do a book every six months. So that's two books a year. Can I do that? Yes, I can. It's just going to take a different level of dedication. You know, some people might think, well, you, maybe you don't have the time. Ah, that's, that's bullshit. I got the time. I got the time. There's, there's always time. There's always time in the day. People say, oh, yeah, I would do this, but I don't have the time to do that. I have a nine to five or I have kids or I have, man, psh, those are excuses, man. You know, there are so many successful people that have children, man, three, four, five children, people that have jobs, 
they work like crazy hours and then they come out they come home at night they eat they play with the kids for a minute say hi to their wife and then they go to work on their passion and they'll work till three o'clock in the morning then go back to then go to bed sleep three hours get up and go to the job you know that's a level of passion man that's and, and you there's a lot of people that are successful a lot of people that are successful and that's that's their drive. So there is no excuse. There is absolutely no excuse. I have no excuse. My nine to five is booking shows. I and I do that from home. I have my own home office. I always have been. Always have. You know? And so I have no excuse. I mean I get up early in the morning. And if I focus and I don't let like social media distract me or the kids all and the grandkids all know when I'm in the office, they don't bug me. They don't knock on the door. They know I'm selling. They know whatever, you know, sometimes they'll go and they'll listen to uh, they'll listen to the door to see if I'm on the phone. If I'm not on the phone, then they might walk in or they might knock. But if they hear I'm on the phone, they usually don't come in or if they step in accidentally, I just kind of wave them away because I'm one of those guys that get distracted easy. I could be talking, and you'll hear that on the podcast, you know. I could be talking, all of a sudden you hear silent. There's a good chance something happens. Somebody walked in, the dog's disturbing me, something went down, you know. So, um, but, uh, but yeah, so, yeah, there's always, there's always time, you know. So anybody that has uh, any kind of passion, if you have a nine-to-five and you have this so-called busy lifestyle, it's bullshit. It's bullshit. You don't. Think about it. You don't. If you wrote down what you did all day long, I guarantee you have about three or four hours that you basically thrown away. It could be anything. It could be scrolling through social media. It could be, you know, on the phone with somebody. It could be watching your your your, your Netflix series. It could be texting. It could be doing a TikTok. Speaking of which, go check out my TikTok. Me and Santana did a new one. It's kind of cool. <laughs> we have fun doing it. So uh, I enjoy it. I feel like a big kid. But I, I actually have fun. And I love doing them with her, you know. Uh, she's fun. She's fun. And uh, she's really smart. And just so you guys know, she's the one that did all the editing. I didn't edit, you know. She stopped it. She she redid them. She directed this entire video. So she um, she's really good at what she does. So I encourage that. You know, she has like... She comes in my office, she, she grabs all kinds of camera gear, my lights and stuff like that. And I let her, I just tell her, don't break it, <laughs> you know? But I encourage her, I'm glad that she's like that. Um, I'm glad that she's autistic. I think she has a, you know, anything she wants to do, I, I encourage. She could be a, 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 she could plant flowers. She could be a rock climber. She could be a writer. She could be a film director. She could be a car mechanic. She could go to the army. Whatever she wants to do, I got her back. She, she'll do it, you know? Um, anything artistic, anything creative, there's a lot of people that will be like, no, well, you got to have a plan B. You got to have something to fall back on. Nah, how with that? How with the plan B? I'm, I'm not big on that. Maybe 90% of you guys will disagree with me, but I don't care. But the 10%, we're right. We're right. You know, you don't want to get into, you know how many people go to law school? They put all this money and years and years into law school. And they don't even become lawyers. You know what they become? A lot of them, writers. <laughs> okay, they have the law degree to fall back on, but who cares now? They will never fall back on it. They won't. It looks pretty up on their wall, you know? That they have their, their certificate or whatever the hell you get when you're a lawyer, you know? Um, but uh, if you don't want to be a lawyer, you're not going to be a lawyer. You know, so, you know, that's the whole thing with, you know, with college. With college, you know? It's subjective. It depends on who you are, what you need. It. If you're gonna be a doctor, yeah, you need to be. A, you need to go to college. You need to go to medical school. If you're gonna be a lawyer, the same thing. You know, you need college. You got to go to law school. You know, these things. There's no getting around. You know, but if all you want to do is, you know, if you want to come out, you just want to kind of challenge the world. Well, find your passions early, as early as you possibly can. You know, and if you're older, that's fine. Find your passion right now. Find out what that is. You know, most of you guys listen to me. If you're not younger than me, you're probably my age. There's probably very few of you that are older than me. And if you're older than me, it's only about a few years. And guess what? We still got a lot of time. We still have a lot of time to do something that we love and that we adore 
and you know fine you know we can make the money money's always a beautiful thing it makes life easy but man don't have regrets please don't have regrets find that thing that you love that thing that you don't even mind doing for free that's the passion and go do it so anyway listen guys i'm gonna call it a night i appreciate you Logging in, you know the deal, man. Subscribe on my YouTube. Check out those TikToks. Everything's on the Latif Mercado. Um, I posted the TikTok also on Instagram. I posted on Facebook. Uh, I just enjoy them. I just want people to see them. I just think they're really, really cool. So let me know what you think. So uh, anyway, until tomorrow, be cool and good night freestyle. Before I lay me down to sleep, I pray to hear a freestyle beat. For if I die before I wake, I hope to make it to the break.